Hello, my name is Arvan Amleshi, and today I will be covering the basics of the CSS layout system Fluxbox. We use it quite often here in Team 3061 Husky Robotics to efficiently style the overlay of our web apps. Simply put, Fluxbox consists of items and containers that are arranged, distributed, and spaced in an efficient manner where all individual values of space are not necessarily needed to be known. Instead, the items of a container are modified to fit a certain space in accordance with certain properties. To create a flux container, one has to give the CSS property of display grid. Here in HTML, we can create a div called folder that has three child elements. Then, in CSS, we can give it the display property of flex using the ID identifier folder. And here we can see the direct effects by inspecting it and going over the flex container. When establishing a flex container, you can also set the direction of the main axis and consequently change how the flex items are placed by using the CSS property flex direction. So for example, the default direction of the flex container is row. You can also do the flex direction of row reverse and you can see the effects. over here. You can also change the flex direction to column and then just like row you can reverse the direction. Another important property is flex wrap which determines how the items of a container will try to fit. For example a flex container has the default property of no wrap that fits all items in one line. And let's change this back to the default setting. Even though this is unneeded, it's a good visualization. So here it does not wrap at all. You can also change it to wrap, which will make all items of a container wrap in more than one line from top to bottom. Change it like this and you can also do the same thing but bottom to top using wrap reverse. And here because all the items would be in one line it doesn't change it but it's good to show it either way. Both flex wrap and flex direction properties can be defined together using the property flex flow such as flex flow row no wrap which is the default setting or if we actually wanted to change it we could do column wrap it is also crucial to determine and set the alignment of a flex container in regards to its main axis using the CSS property justify content for example by declaring justify content flex start all items of a container are aligned starting from the beginning of whatever flex direction was set so if we wanted to do that, we would just do this and this. It starts from the start. Flex end, on the other hand, aligns the flex item starting from the end of whatever flex direction was. So flex end. Another option is justify content center which center aligns all items centered among the main axis. Space between is also another option and it aligns the first item like flex start, the last item like flex end and spaces all items evenly. Like this. 
Space evenly aligns all items with equal spaces, including from the start and ending point of whatever flex direction was set. Like this. Like this. Please note that there are many unique ways to establish flex direction that will be not be talked about during this video, so I recommend going to the Mo Mozilla Developer Network page to learn more about flex. And wow, right here. Flex items can also be aligned in regards to the axis perpendicular to the main axis set by using the property align items. The default setting is stretch that stretches each individual item to the container. We can visualize how this would look like by align item stretch, but this is default, so it would not change anything. Flex start, flex end, and center work the same way as before for justify content, just in respect to the perpendicular axis instead of the main axis. Something new is the term baseline, which aligns items along the perpendicular axis in accordance to the position of their baseline. When there is more than one line of flex items, you can also use the align content property to align these lines. So for good practice, I recommend going to this Mozilla site to explore for more good practice. Just like CSS Grid, you can individually place flex items. By using the property order, you can determine the order an element appears in the container. So let's just give IDs for each diff. this and let's see how this affects it wow the align item property of a container can also be overridden by an individual flex item using the property align self By using the property flex grow, the space an individual flex item takes in a container can be set by using a proportional value in which the default value is 1. So to visualize this, we can have the second order item to the value of 4. And even though the default value is 1, we can still just write 1 which is the same thing for E2 as E3 here. And you can see the direct changes here. You can also use the property flex string to do the exact opposite as the name applies. For example, we can do this. Another related property is flex basis that sets a flex item's initial size. You can use values like auto, which uses the set width and height values, or give a specific length value, like 20% or 20px. Flex grow, flex shrink, and flex basis are all part of the property flex that uses the syntax of flex grow, flex shrink, and flex basis with the default setting being flex 0, 1 auto. Example. You can delete this and just write flex zero one auto. Once again, it follows the syntax of this flex grow. 
or sorry, flex, and then flex, bro. Flex shrink. Flex basis. That's all the crucial information that will be covered in this video, but for the sake of best practice, I once again stress on exploring the Mozilla page and practicing Flexbox using it with your own code. Thank you.